In this video we will take you to an educational tour concerning the cruise tourism industry. During this a learning course significant information for the concept of blue growth, the economic overview, the required academic qualifications, the necessary technical skills and behavioral competences, and the potential job opportunities for a successful professional career in the cruise tourism industry will be presented. Special focus will be given to the Eastern Mediterranean and Black Sea region. 71% of the Earth's surface is water which is a very high percentage. It is important and necessary to further harness the oceans, seas and coasts in order to create jobs and value, always from a sustainable point of view. This is the blue growth concept we have been hearing about. The blue economy represents roughly 5.4 million jobs and generates a gross added value of almost 500 billion a year while the output of the global ocean economy is estimated at 1.3 trillion euros and this could be more than double by 2030. The European Commission has since reiterated that Europe should not miss this opportunity. Our coasts and seas have the potential to deliver growth and jobs in the years to come. Ensuring sustainable blue growth in marine and maritime sectors we need highly qualified and skilled professionals. For these reasons for marine and maritime economic activities have been selected as of strategic importance in the eastern Mediterranean and Black Sea region. These include both traditional as well as emerging industries in the region, namely, maritime transport, cruise tourism, marine aquaculture and offshore oil and gas. Maritime transportation includes operating vessels, shipbuilding and ship repair. Cruise tourism industry consists of cruise lines, travel agents, key suppliers and cruise line partners including ports. Marine aquaculture refers to the culturing of species that live in the ocean. We consider marine aquaculture that takes place in the ocean that is in cages, on the sea floor, or suspended in the water column. Finally, offshore oil and gas industry refers to the development of oil fields and natural gas deposits under the ocean. As a result, the European-funded project Mentor is focused on these four main sectors. The cruise tourism industry is the fastest-growing segment in the entire tourism market. Cruise tourism is a luxurious form of traveling, involving an all-inclusive holiday on a cruise ship of at least 48 hours, according to a specific itinerary, in which the cruise ship calls at several ports or cities. The global cruise industry is a 40 billion U.S. business. Worldwide, the cruise industry has an annual passenger compound growth rate of 6.55% from 1990 to 2019. The industry has been growing, despite the global economic crisis. It is estimated that more than 25 million passengers will be carried on cruise ships by 2019, the majority coming from North America which is a constantly blooming market for the cruise industry. Growth strategies to date have been driven by larger capacity new builds and ship diversification, more berths locations where a vessel may be moored, usually for the purposes of loading and unloading in local ports, more destinations and new onboard slash onshore activities that match consumer demands. According to the Cruise Industry News Annual Report, a fleet of more than 340 cruise vessels was estimated to have been deployed in 2018, with a passenger capacity of more than 550,000 berths. The number and passenger capacity of vessels is expected to continue growing. The Mediterranean region, MED, has been one of the most dynamic cruise regions of the world. The share of the MED in the total cruise fleet deployment increased from 11.5% in 2003 to 15.8% in 2017, making it the second biggest cruise region in the world, following the Caribbean. Combined, the two regions, Caribbean and the MED, host 51.2% of the global cruise fleet capacity. Thanks to the excellent climate conditions and unique tourist and cultural attractions, the Mediterranean region is the biggest market for cruise operators in Europe. All leading cruise companies are present in the Med and offer a wide range of tourist packages. The West Med holds the biggest share in the Mediterranean region in terms of cruise activities hosted, of total passenger movements accommodated and of respective cruise calls. It is followed by the Adriatic, the East Med and lastly the Black Sea subregions. The Black Sea is the smallest distinctive geographical port region as regards the magnitude of cruise activities. However, it needs to be noted that the East Med and Black Sea have important historical sites and cultural riches. Some of the world's earliest civilizations flourished around the East Med. Undoubtedly, cruise tourism can have a huge positive impact to the socio-economic growth of coastal regions, 
Thus it is an interesting niche market for them. There are a number of reasons why cruise ship jobs are a popular choice. Firstly, you'll have the opportunity to travel the world and see far-flung destinations. Secondly there are various jobs available on a cruise ship. From accommodation, bar and fitness staff to entertainers, nannies and retail workers, there is something for everyone with an interest in leisure, hospitality and tourism. In addition, you can save money very easily, as accommodation and food costs are taken care of. In other words, whatever you earn, you keep it as disposable income. The salaries of the cruise ship crew are quite good and they are higher than the respective professions ashore. Tips for some professions on board can top up the wages. Another advantage is the connections you get to make when working on a cruise ship. You'll meet a variety of people from all types of backgrounds, forge new friendships and make international contacts that will undoubtedly be useful during the course of your career. Moreover, there are great career investment opportunities. Cruise line companies invest time and money into training their employees. Once on board, you'll be encouraged to seek promotion, and if you're hardworking and perform well at your work, you will achieve it quickly. Working on a cruise ship may sound pretty good, but life at sea isn't for everyone and there are some clear disadvantages. While you might be traveling the world, it's certainly not a holiday. Cruise ship staff works long hours and days off are rare. Homesickness can affect your time on board, as you'll usually be at sea for at least six months of the year. You'll share your living quarters with other crew members, therefore you'll have to adapt to living in small, cramped conditions. It's also difficult to strike a good work-slash-life balance as you spend most of your time on a ship. You don't get to clock off and go home like those working on land. There are a number of trends that affect the cruise industry. Familiarizing yourself with them will help you better understand the current and future needs of this truly international industry. First of all, more and more people of different generations especially millennials and Generation Z go on cruises. Secondly, travel agents will continue to be the matchmakers between travelers and cruise lines. The guidance of the travel professionals is very important, as they can match the travelers' desires and demands with suitable cruise offers. Thirdly, cruises take place not only at sea, but also in rivers. River cruise demand has been increasing for the past few years. Additionally, in order to become more competitive, cruise companies are increasingly coming up with new features such as more and better dining options. Cruise lines also feature more exciting entertainment options such as singing, dancing and acting shows. Aiming at enticing more travelers, they also include new destinations including colder climate ones and they extend their offerings to the off-peak season. Additionally, cruise lines are investing more and more on the use of green technologies while promoting the protection and preservation of the communities their ships visit. Furthermore, they are tailoring trips for the growing number of health-conscious travelers from wellness seminars and fitness to food choices. We are living in the era of digital transformation. Cruise lines are increasingly integrating traveler-friendly onboard technologies that enhance connectivity and travel experiences. Experiential travel has evolved into achievement travel, as vacationers are looking for experiences beyond sightseeing. Cruise passengers can conquer Maku Piku or complete culinary workshops hosted by famous chefs. Cruise ships constantly evolve to respond to the needs of the travelers. In order to simplify the travel process and create personalized experiences, they are integrating new technologies and innovations such as virtual reality, robotic systems, intelligent navigation devices, public interactive screens, applications and wearables. Moreover, the design of cruise ships is becoming more sophisticated, integrating extraordinary features, such as underwater lounges, more spacious and modern cabins innovative platforms and spacious decks with a panoramic ocean view. In order to excite travelers, cruise lines are enhancing their entertainment options, in line with the innovative and sophisticated design of their ships. You can find onboard water slides, climbing gardens, mini golf courses, gawkar tracks, playgrounds and of course spas and fitness centers. Furthermore, the cruise lines are constantly improving and amplifying the menus that are served on board in order to satisfy the taste buds of every traveler. Passengers can find fine dining restaurants, specialty restaurants and snack bars that provide an extensive option of menus. In this and the following slides, the results of the statistical analysis undertaken in the context of the Mentor Project will be presented. 
This analysis refers to the set of academic qualifications, technical skills and behavioral competencies required as well as to the professions with the highest demand in the cruise industry. For the analysis, a total of 119 questionnaires of Blue Economy stakeholders have been collected and statistically elaborated. These stakeholders came from four countries. Bulgaria, Cyprus, Greece and Romania. The questions that were distributed to them, were divided into two sets. The first set of questions was referred to the current trends and needs within the industry, whereas the second one to the future identified gaps and trends of the cruise tourism sector. Academic qualifications are the degrees and diplomas that a person has acquired either by full-time study, or part-time study or private study, whether conferred in the home country or abroad, by public or private educational authorities. According to the data obtained from the statistical analysis of the Mentor Project with regard to the academic qualifications required in the cruise industry, 13 main categories of tertiary education degrees were identified in the questionnaires to be in high demand in the cruise industry, namely, Computer Science, Naval Architecture and Marine Engineering, Maritime Studies, Mechanical Engineering, Touristic Studies, Economic Studies, Cooking Studies, Technical Studies, Chemical Engineering slash Environmental Engineering, Accounting, Shipping Law Studies, Medical Studies and other specialization courses or lower ranking crew. These academic qualifications can be classified based on the proposed taxonomy by the International Standard Classification of Education, ICED. As educational systems vary a lot between countries, in order to facilitate comparability, the proposed classification by the ICED is adopted. In particular, ICED 2011 has nine levels of education, from level 0 to level 8. Levels 0 to 2 represent low education. Levels 3 and 4 medium level of education and 5 to 8 high level of education. The statistical analysis of the questionnaires was performed at two different levels. At regional level, in the East Med and Black Sea region, for the cruise tourism industry and at country level for the cruise tourism industry, namely for each of the following countries Bulgaria, Cyprus, Greece and Romania. The identified academic degrees with the highest demand in the cruise industry in the East Med and Black Sea region for the next decade are the following. A degree in computer science is located in the first place with 20.3%. The degrees in naval architecture and marine engineering are placed in the second spot with 17%. A degree in maritime studies is located in the third place with 10.9%. Finally, a degree in mechanical engineering. In touristic studies or a degree as lower ranking crew will also be in high demand in the cruise tourism industry in the next decade. Another significant aspect of the mentor project concerns the pairing of the identified academic qualifications with the highest demand in the cruise tourism industry in the next decade, with the existing academic institutions in the Eastern Mediterranean and Black Sea region, that provide the necessary educational courses for these qualifications. In this context, some illustrative examples are presented as follows. By studying in universities, technical universities, schools or departments of computer science, a potential student can obtain the respective degree. The European University in Cyprus, the Athens University of Applied Sciences and the Technical University of Crete and Greece are some proposed institutions for this academic qualification. The duration of the studies varies between three and five years. Similarly, the Technological University of Varna in Bulgaria, the National Technical University of Athens in Greece and the University of Galati in Romania provide courses in the field of naval architecture and marine engineering. The duration of the studies varies between three and five years. A degree in maritime studies consists of one of the highest in demand academic qualification. The Cyprus Maritime Academy in Cyprus the University of the Aegean in Greece and the Maritime University of Constanta in Romania, are some indicative institutions of the region for this qualification. The duration of the studies varies between two and four years. In addition, a degree in mechanical engineering is characterized as the third highest in demand qualification. A student who focuses on this field has a variety of institutions to choose from, like the Ovidius University of Constanta in Romania, the Frederick University in Cyprus and the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki in Greece. The duration of the studies varies between three and five years. Another high-in-demand qualification is a degree in tourism. The Cyprus University of Technology, 
the Burgas University as in Zlatarov in Bulgaria and the Bucharest University of Economic Studies in Romania, are some indicative institutions of the region for this qualification. The time duration of this degree lasts three to five years. Technical skills are the abilities and knowledge needed to perform specific tasks. They are practical, and often relate to mechanical, IT, mathematical, or scientific tasks. Some examples include knowledge of programming languages, mechanical equipment, or tools. While technical skills are often most important for jobs related to information technology IT and other fields in the sciences, many other industries also want employees with at least some technical skills. Many of them require training and experience. 19 technical skills were identified as necessary in the upcoming decade for the cruise tourism industry, namely auditing management systems, communications, customer care electronics, hardware, computer, IT, hygiene, sanitation, languages, machinery damage and repair, navigating specialized crafts, operating systems, project management and risk assessment. Other important technical skills in demand are safety, survival, firefighting, seamanship, security, social media, technical writing and reporting, testing, inspection and verification and welding, materials and NDE. The statistical elaboration of the questionnaire showed that in the Eastern Mediterranean and Black Sea region the most crucial technical skills the next decade will be the seamanship with 14%, communications and customer care with 12% respectively. They are followed by hygiene, sanitation, safety, survival, firefighting and technical writing and reporting with 7% respectively. Other important technical skills that will be in demand are languages, machinery damage and repair, navigating specialized crafts and risk assessment with 5% respectively. They are followed by hardware, computer, IT and project management with 3.5% respectively. Lastly, other technical skills that will be required in the cruise industry are auditing management systems, electronics, operating systems, security, social media, testing, inspection and verification and welding, materials and ND with 1.75% respectively. Competence is defined as a cluster of related abilities, commitments, knowledge, and skills that enable a person or an organization to act effectively in a job or situation. Because each level of responsibility has its own requirements, competence can occur in any period of a person's life or at any stage of his or her career. In the context of the Mentor Project, in the distributed questionnaire to Blue Economy stakeholders, a pre-selected list of behavioral competencies was included and participants indicated the most important ones required for the cruise tourism industry. Thirteen competencies have been identified which are the following leading, deciding, planning and organizing, business awareness, analyzing slash problem solving, costumer orientation, oral communication, communication in writing, networking, teamwork, flexibility slash adaptability, resilience and personal motivation. Life and work conditions on the board cruise ships are not easy. Working for long hours and performing various tasks in cooperation with other crew members, providing high quality services to the passengers, Staying on the ship for months and traveling to various destinations worldwide while being exposed to hostile surroundings such as the open ocean require certain behavioral competences. The most important ones in the cruise industry in the next decade according to the results of the questionnaires distributed to Blue Economy stakeholders, are teamwork slash collaboration with 20.59%, followed by planning and organizing 16.18%, customer orientation 14.71%, Analyzing slash problem solving 10.29%, personal motivation 8.82%, oral communication 7.35% and flexibility slash adaptability. The cruise industry is constantly growing. As it is global industry, employment opportunities exist around the world. There are many different types of jobs in the industry, spanning from mechanical and technical ones to hospitality, entertainment and fitness ones. What jobs are on offer? There are various different jobs that you can do at sea. For example, cruise companies need Accommodation staff positions include laundry staff, cleaners and stewards. These are for hospitality students, graduates and professionals. Bar, restaurant and kitchen staff. Experienced bartenders, waiters waitresses and professional chefs are required by cruise companies. 
Casino staff If you're an experienced croupier, working in the ship's casino could be a great option. Deck and engine room staff, this category includes seafarers, marine engineers and technicians. These people are responsible for the proper operation and maintenance of the ship and, therefore, for the safety of the passengers. Entertainment staff, for students slash professionals who can dance, sing, host, or are qualified swimming instructors. This category can also include arranging and leading excursions as a holiday representative, tourism officer or tour manager. Fitness and beauty staff These roles are for graduates slash professionals with experience and qualifications in hairstyling, manicures, pedicures, massage and personal training. IT staff on board information technology teams oversee and support all shipboard IT systems and operations. A degree or experience in information technology is essential for this job category. Managers positions are available in cruise companies both on land and at sea. These roles are ideal for those with experience or qualifications in business, management or leisure, travel or tourism management. Medical staff cruise companies are responsible for the health and safety of all passengers so medical staff is essential. Available jobs include on-board doctors, nurses and paramedics. Nannies and children's entertainers qualified nannies and people with experience in leading kids clubs or babysitting or providing daytime entertainment for children are in high demand. These posts are ideal for childcare students, graduates and professionals. Retail staff on board shops will employ graduates with experience in working in a retail environment, Sally's customer service. Some additional indicative cruise tourism professions are listed here. It is worth noting that seasonal or full-time work is available. Many seasonal vacancies operate on contracts lasting between three and six months, with others stretching to around a year. Another aspect explored by the Mentor Project is the professions that will have the highest demand in the cruise tourism industry in the future. For the statistical analysis of the stakeholders' questionnaires, a wider profession categorization was adopted. Hence, 15 cruise tourism profession categories were identified to have the highest demand in the cruise tourism industry in the next decade, namely engineers, such as mechanical, electrical, piping, naval architect, IT, HVAC, electrical automation engineers, superintendent, electricians, fleet assistant, ETA with 18.46% ER officers with 15.38%. Lower ranking ER crew such as fitter, motorman, welder, electrician with 12.31%, food and beverage personnel with 10.77%. They are followed by bridge officers with 9.23%, housekeeping personnel cabin steward, housekeeper with 6.15%, personal care and shipboard medical personnel such as nurse, master etc. with 4.62% and marketing, PR personnel with 4.42%. Other important professions are lower-ranking deck crew such as seafarer, helmsman, office personnel such as secretary, desk officer, purchaser, marine technical support, fleet assistant, leisure activity personnel such as skipper, onshore officers such as communication officer, DPA, HSE, marine superintendent and technician such as welder, fitter, with 3.08% respectively. Finally, accounting personnel and manager such as human resources, DPA, HSE, project with 1.54% respectively. No matter where the cruise ship is located, it operates 24 hours a day, 7 days a week in sometimes difficult weather conditions. This means the hours are long and the working conditions for the people who work on board a cruise ship are not easy. Technological advances in ship operations facilitate the realization of tasks as some of them are automated but there are still plenty of physical tasks that need to be performed on board. Cruise ship crews work 10 to 15 hours a day for 4 to 6 months, depending on their contract with the cruise line company. They are also well trained in safety and environmental regulations to ensure the safety and protection of the cruise passengers. The following video briefly describes the departments of a cruise ship and the respective professions involved. So what kinds of jobs are available on a cruise ship? In many ways, ships are like small floating cities. And just like in a city, there are all kinds of professionals who help run and keep it functioning at its best. 
Every day, an endless list of tasks must be attended to in order to ensure the comfort and happiness of thousands of guests and crew, from meals that must be prepared and served, to the staterooms that require daily cleaning, and the engines that need oiling. From the bulkheads that must be painted, to the computers that need programming, to the money that needs to be counted, and the shows that must be performed. Hundreds of jobs are performed by our onboard team, all of them working as a single team in perfect unison. The types of jobs aboard our ships are categorized in two major areas, the Marine Operations and the Hotel Operations Divisions. Let's begin by exploring our Marine Operations Division and the many professionals that collaborate to take us safely where we need to go. The deck team is in charge of everything related to the navigation and safety of the ship. It includes, among others, the captain and first officer, along with most of the bridge crew. And they work very closely with the engine team, who are in charge of, well, the engines. Actually, it involves making sure all the ship's main power systems, propulsion system, and ship's firefighting systems are working at all times. These include officers who work in the engine control room and bridge, plus the engineers, technicians, maintenance experts, and oilers that work directly on the engines deep inside the ship. Supporting both teams, and really the overall functionality of the entire ship, is the electrical department, handling all aspects of power distribution throughout the ship, from the propellers to the vanity lights in the cabins. The environmental department is also part of marine operations. They are in charge of all of the ship's environmental management systems, including waste disposal, recycling, and save the waves, a program implemented fleet-wide to promote environmentally responsible practices at every level of our daily operations. Working hard to keep our guests and crew safe while on board is our security team. They are also in charge of security during embarkation and disembarkation of all persons and provisions. Finally, some of our brands offer great opportunities for on-the-job training for students from nautical universities around the world. The cadet program is a unique chance to learn under the tutelage of some of the leaders in the field on some of the most advanced ships in the world. This wraps up the Marine Division, the workforce that keeps the ship safe, powered, and moving 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Now let's talk about the hotel operations. As you have already seen, our cruise ships are floating state-of-the-art resorts and as such, most of the positions within a hotel are also available on board our ships. Some of the departments may have slightly different names depending on the brand, but the functions throughout the company remain the same. Let's have a look. The Hotel Operations Division has a core group of departments that handles most administrative functions on board the ship. This includes the Hotel Management Department, led by the Hotel Director. This team is in charge of the overall administration of the hotel division. The Human Resources Department. This team handles all aspects of employment, crew welfare, and training for all crew on board the ship. From welcoming you on your first day to supporting your professional development, the Human Resources team is always ready to help you. The Finance Department. This team makes sure we account for every cent we receive and every cent we spend. They calculate and tabulate all the numbers that make our operation work and report all those numbers back to our headquarters. Most importantly to all of our employees, they are the ones that make sure you get paid. Casino Operations. As part of the many amenities we offer on board, our casinos provide our guests the opportunity to have fun with games of chance. From slot machines and digital poker to classic table games like roulette, blackjack, pie gow, and craps, we literally offer our guests all the glamour of Monte Carlo and the excitement of Las Vegas. Food and beverage service. The dining experience is one of the key components of the vacations we offer. Each of our ship boasts a fascinating variety of restaurants, lounges, and coffee shops where our servers, baristas, bartenders, and management teams provide our guests with exquisite dishes, innovative drinks, and engaging service. Culinary. Our team of culinary professionals plays a key role in providing our guests with a unique and memorable vacation by striving to make each meal an unforgettable experience. With a variety of dining options that range from sushi bars to white glove service restaurants, 
our ships offer our guests the perfect opportunity to explore different cuisines. If you are passionate about the gastronomic world, make sure you learn more about our extraordinary culinary offerings. Entertainment and cruise activities. Entertainment aboard our ships is spectacular, astounding, amazing, dazzling, daring, sensational, thrilling, and simply wondrous. There are not enough words to describe it. We employ thousands of talented artists, including musicians, dancers, performers, acrobats, singers, divers, and skaters who entertain our guests in world-class productions of Broadway musicals, Cirque shows, dance reviews, concerts, ice shows, parades, and hundreds of other acts throughout our fleet. They are supported by a massive team of technicians who work behind the scenes on sound, lighting, and rigging using state-of-the-art equipment on venues Las Vegas and New York will be jealous of. An extension of our entertainment department, our cruise and guest activities team, is always engaging and full of energy, creating a fun and exciting atmosphere throughout our ships. From sports and life enrichment to educational and special interest programming, there's an activity for everyone. Guest Services, Guest Relations. Representing the hospitality spirit of our company, this team handles all personalized guest services aboard our ships. From simple front desk assistance to resolving guest complaints, this department places an essential role in assuring guests have the best possible experience on board our ships. Great communication skills, ability to speak several languages, and a passion for customer service are some of the key competencies of this team. Housekeeping. Understanding the importance of keeping an impeccable environment, our housekeeping professionals work tirelessly to clean every stateroom above our guest standards. On turnaround day, they handle the collection, organization, and distribution of thousands of suitcases and bags. And every day, they are the first smiling faces our guests see outside their staterooms, answering questions, fulfilling special requests, or delivering the special touch that makes each of our brands unique. Facilities. As we know, any beautiful ship is only as great as it is maintained. The facilities team is in charge of not only sanitizing the public spaces, but also maintaining the many amenities on board each vessel. Painting, fixing lights, resolving plumbing issues, refreshing upholstery are some of the many things this team does to keep our ships at their best. Inventory. Every week, tons of goods are loaded onto our ships. From food and linens to furniture and machinery, it is the job of the inventory department to not only load, unload, store, and deliver all this merchandise, but also to properly manage inventory levels. Shore excursions. With hundreds of destinations around the world ranging from the cultural to the natural, our shore excursions team creates exciting tours as diverse as our guests. From water sports and adventure treks to sightseeing and educational tours, the list is endless. Some of our brands even seek special skills in this department, such as scuba diving or multiple languages. Information technology. As some of the most technologically advanced in the world, our ships rely on a network of computers and servers to operate their different systems and key components. The information technology team aboard each ship is charged with managing and maintaining both the hardware and software systems 24 hours a day. Medical. Keeping in mind that our guests and crew members' health is a top priority for us, each of our ships is equipped with medical facilities staffed with independently contracted doctors and nurses who consistently strive to provide high quality primary and immediate care. There are very specific requirements for careers in our medical department. If you are interested, please consult the brand websites for detailed information. Onboard marketing, spa, photography, retail services, art auctions. From gift shops and spas to high-end shopping and art galleries, our onboard marketing team handles the marketing and revenue generation for all products and services aboard our ships. It is important to note that most spa, photography, art gallery, and onboard shopping jobs are not offered directly through us. We work with various partners whose contact information is available on each individual brand site. As you can see, there are many opportunities to join our team. Some of you might be interested in applying for positions in more than one department, and that's okay. Please just keep in mind that to be considered for a role, you must meet at least the minimum requirements. 
Now that you have a good idea of which department would be a better fit for you, we invite you to visit rclctrack.com to learn about current openings and apply online. The captain is the highest ranking officer and the master of the cruise ship. A cruise ship captain is responsible for all operations aboard the vessel, including but not limited to navigation, safety and medical care of all souls aboard, both guests and crew, protection of environment and compliance with the cruise line's policies, local authorities, and international maritime law. What's incredible about steering a giant ship like this one is there's no one single steering wheel. It is a conglomeration of many systems. And the person at the head of it was nice enough to tell me all about it. Captain Foster, before all this technology, mm -hmm. how did you do it? Well, first and foremost, this ship used to be open bridgelands. Okay. We've enclosed this now, it's all beautiful, because of all the technology that's here. So back in the day, first of all, the ships were a lot smaller, of course. You'd still have radio communications, um, but whereas here, we need to sort of a machine to tell us exactly where the wind is and what speed it is, of course. Back in the day, you'd feel it in your face. Absolutely. I haven't yet felt seasick, thank goodness. How do you counteract that? Uh, well, if the weather was such that the ship was moving, that we would deploy uh, uh, one of our two stabilizers. And they operate just like an aircraft wing to keep the ship absolutely upright and stable. How does the boat move? It sounds like a ridiculous question, but... We are propelled by two propellers, and uh, they're sp spin around, and they're, they're turned by uh, what we call diesel electric propulsion. So they're actually turned by huge electric motors. There's over 5,000 people here under your care, really, while you're at sea. What are the safety precautions you have in place to make sure that we all get to where we need to go in one piece? This is a very modern cruise ship. She's got multiple layers of safety systems to ensure everybody remains safe on board this ship. Uh, we've got highly trained and competent officers, so um, I am in absolutely no doubt at all this is a very safe mode of transport and uh, a very safe and enjoyable way to spend your vacation. The chief engineer is responsible for the entire technical operations and equipment of the vessel including engineering, electrical, and mechanical. He or she is the head of the entire engine department aboard the cruise ship and is the highest ranking officer within the department. Along with the captain slash master, the chief engineer is one of the most important figures in the marine operations division on the ship. He or she needs to make sure that the systems and equipment, for example main and auxiliary engines, generators, electrical and electronic systems, communication systems, waste management systems, heating, cooling, ventilation systems, etc., within every subdivision of the engine department are operating correctly and are maintained up to the highest possible standards of the cruise line and international regulations. I can't think of too many jobs that are much more complex than uh, the chief engineer on a major cruise ship. It's an awesome responsibility. The chief engineers are are magicians in some ways that the, that they can make all this happen. They they have a, a staff of a, a hundred people that have various disciplines from electricians to plumbers to fitters to mechanics. The engine control room is the, the, the heart of the vessel. By using the computers and the operative system, we are be able to uh, start the vessel, to start the power plant, to start uh, giving lighting, and ultimate as a propulsion ready to go. You're looking at a really a small city that's moving. You provide your own power, all your own electricity generation, all of the services that a city for maybe as many as 8,000 people need. Either way, in engine room, we go daily to look at the equipment, and then uh, we have our comments shared with the first engineer, with the staff chief, uh, 
in what actually could be improved. He's also responsible for training of the, of the engineers that maintain and operate those systems. First priority for, uh, for us is uh, the safe life at sea. The evolution of the job goes parallel with the evolution of the equipment. We manage uh, with the same confidence and this I have to say thank you to Royal Caribbean and to the system that uh, can make people like me feel confident to run this vessel on the technical side. We're fortunate in, uh, at Royal Caribbean Cruises in all of our brands to have some of the best chief engineers in the world. The executive chef slash cook is responsible for the entire galley or kitchen staff food planning, quality control and directs all the culinary and associated activities throughout the vessel. He or she supervises all food service functions in the public areas of the cruise ship, for example dining rooms, specialty and casual dining restaurants, monitors the performance of the galley department and reports to the ship's food and beverage manager and hotel director. Is there any issues I need to know about? You got all your ingredients? What brasserie is it today? Brasserie 6. Tomorrow? Brasserie 7. I'm more commonly known as the general. I'd like to think it's because of my hat. I feel comfortable wearing my hat like this. I've bought it like this my whole career. It's just the way I wear my hat. There's no rhyme or reason behind it. I say it as a joke. The captain steers the ship, but the chef drives it. Every engine ran low a little bit for a couple of hours. We would still float and nobody would notice. Everybody wakes up this morning and there's no food on the ship. I'm sure there'll be a lot of unhappy guests. Right now, we have over 10,000 chefs in the fleet uh, throughout 23 ships, and each and every one of them work under me. It's something I love, it drives me. I couldn't see me doing anything else. I've been doing it for 26 years and it's the one thing I know that keeps my mind occupied. In this venue alone, we will push out in excess of 30,000 meals a day based on a full ship. As you can see, the weather's not too good outside, so the ship will be full. I get up at 4.30 in the morning because everybody else is asleep. So that means my phone isn't going. I'm not getting disturbed. I have two hours to myself, and that's where I get myself organized. Shape cantaloupe 400, yeah? Yes, sir. Yeah, make sure you answer me, please, yeah? Scallop 600, yeah? Shrimp cocktail 700. How many shrimp cocktails did you do last night? Last night, I did You didn't do any last night? No. Have you stopped doing that now? How many steaks did you go through last night, Butch? Three. You went through 700. Make sure you don't get caught with your trousers down there, yeah? What's happened to your hat, man? That's not gonna make you look any taller. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened to your hat? What's the consumption like on your donuts? Time sir? Yes, boss. So we have blueberry muffins, yeah? With no blueberries in them. So we need to get some more blueberries in there. Yes. Today is gonna to be a long, long, busy day. Today and tomorrow. All right, so get yourselves well prepared. Thanks, fellas. No one man runs an operation like this. This is where we'll be serving breakfast from today for the dining room. I have three of the same kitchen here. Morning, are you lost? Yes. What are you looking for? Not too choppy for you, you know? It's lovely. It's lovely, yeah. Guest interaction is probably the part that I love the most. <laughs> have a nice morning, guys. Thanks. You know where you're going? Yeah. Yeah? We've done this before. Oh, have you done it before, have you? Yeah. Well, if I need any advice, I'll come to you, okay? Yeah. yeah. So this is my cafe promenade. We'll put out over 3,000 pizzas a day in here. If you keep the kids happy, mum and dad's going to be happy. What is this? Who, who's done this? Can you move that? Please. Yeah. You're just waiting for this hat to blow off, aren't you? It's stuck on. As soon as it goes on, that's it, it's stuck. This is one of my favourite spots. It gives you a good indication of what's going on down there. And I can see all my fruit bowls, all my bacon sausage, all the breakfast items. So if it's running low, I can just call the chefs in the kitchen, ask them to come out to the buffet station. She's only been with me for an hour so far, and you've seen the ground that I've covered. Let me take you into my tasting kitchen now. Morning. 
tell me what's missing off that kebab. Missing? Yeah, what's missing from it? Nothing, Nothing missing. All the ingredients are there. So all, all the ingredients are there, but we got we're lacking one ingredient. What's the ingredient? Little red color. Alright, supposed to be much redder, yeah? yeah. Alright, like tandoori. Who made the sauce for the turkey? Yes, yeah? Did you yes, taste it? Yes sir. Really? Taste that, tell me what you taste. This is a bit too sharp, sir. Salty. Yeah? Extremely salty. Who made the vegetable stock for the broth? You made it. Tell me how you made your stock. We're constantly developing our chefs and constantly training them through our in-house training program. So it gives me a good indication of where we may have some people that we need to show a little bit more attention to. And can I see you write this down? Yes. Huh? I can teach anyone how to cook. That's the easy part. To teach someone to be dedicated and willing. That's got to come from within. Carpaccio de Manzo presented nicely. Lots of flavor, really nice. Make sure they're all like that, and that goes for any pasta. Your Mercedes is nice, nice and fluffy, no air gaps in the middle. Well done on the Mercedes, it's not an easy one to make. Right, gentlemen? Yeah, have a good afternoon. Enjoy Brasserie 7. I'll see you all later. Excuse me. Oh, man, what are you doing? Jesus. Move back. Honestly, move your trolleys out the way. To be able to stand for the first 15 years of a culinary career for 16, 17 hours a day, in blistering heat, in a super intense atmosphere. To uh, not have Christmas at home, to not celebrate birthdays unless it was with the chefs at the end of dinner service. To uh, give all that up for over 25 years, you have to have to be slightly imbalanced. This is our Azumi concept. Uh, we have nine sushi restaurants across the fleet and nine of our different ships. Yeah, hopefully we will have them in every ship in the fleet at some stage. Andre, did you do the sauce today? Come and taste this, please. It's a little bit on the edge. It's well and truly over the edge. Yeah. He's very tough to work with, but uh, he always supports. When we need some help, he's always there to support us. Uh, the soups I have no issues with. The soup is fine. The broth is fine. The double chicken consomme is fine. He has a very good knowledge about food, which is uh, very good for us because we are growing in our fields. So it's very good for us to have the right person to guide you in your right direction. One day I would like to be like him. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, chef. Young man, would you like to just step forward for me? First of all, good evening, chef. Good evening, everyone. There's so much more that I want them to get out of being not just a chef, but a professional. I want them to be professional and in how they conduct themselves. I want them to always want to keep learning. You know, once you stop, then everything just stops, you know. The more I learn, the more I want to know. Do we have truffle fries? Truffle fries, yes, we do have truffle fries. Oh really? Fries. Do we? Are we you love sure? them. I can't find one single issue on the plate. And generally, I can always find something. So whoever, whoever put this table together, job well done. Excellent. I just want the chefs to have that same hunger all the time. I think it deserves a round of applause, gentlemen. You've done very well. I'm the best. <laughs> the hotel director is responsible for the efficient and safe running of all hotel operations such as guest service, entertainment, food and beverage, onboard revenue departments, support services, etc. in order to provide the guests the most outstanding hospitality service. He or she works closely with the corporate offices and the head of departments on board in order to continuously improve the product offer for example food and beverage, shore excursions, entertainment programs etc. and makes sure that the quality expectations of passengers and the standards set by the company are fulfilled. The hotel director on board works very closely with the captain. Uh, the captain is obviously overall command of the ship, but the hotel director is looking after the guest vacation experiences. When it comes to the guest facing experience, it's really about that hotel director who leads those departments, whether it's entertainment, culinary, dining, housekeeping, 
There's so many varied departments. It's really the hotel director who's conducting that orchestra. I head up a team of 13 subdivision heads. So on a daily basis, there are inspections in the morning, there's walk-arounds in the mornings, there's conversations with different department heads. There's always emails. You get emails in from the office, emails in from guests, checking on the shows, checking on the restaurants, checking on basically how the operation is going. It's very diverse, always changing, and it hardly ever repeats itself. So it's a very enjoyable job. It's all about teamwork. I rely on my managers. I have a very good, strong set of managers that are very good and capable in their respective areas. And then obviously being out in public and having conversations with guests that are wowed by our product or simply just appreciate the crew. That's always a nice feeling when somebody comes back to you and says, your crew's amazing. That gives you a great sense of satisfaction. The guest services manager is responsible for the entire guest services and customer relations operation including the day-to-day -day running of reception, passenger embarkation and disembarkation, cabin changes, lost luggages, future cruises and shore excursions departments. Hi there, I'm Tony, I'm from the United States, and I'm one of the guest services managers on board our beautiful ships. I have a great job. I get to spend every day interacting with our guests, creating that magical experience that they expect from our company. I lead a team of amazing crew members from all around the world who are just as passionate about what I do as I am, so that's great to share with them. One of the things I love most about what I do is that the guest services team is constantly seeing new challenges. Every guest has a different story, has a different situation, has a different future with our company and on board their cruise. So we have to take that, deal with it, work from there, and solve every challenge as it comes to us. We're one big team here. We all want to make sure the guests are having a great time. So whether it's calling housekeeping, calling the food and beverage team, or even dealing with our maritime operations team, we're that touch point. We have to make sure we're talking to everyone else and making sure that we all solve that challenge. We all solve that problem and make that experience for the guests. The guest services manager position is also one that has a lot of variety each and every day. I start the day, I could be at the desk assisting our hosts and hostesses with guests on the line. Also, I may be out in the lobby greeting the guests, seeing how they're doing, making sure they're having a good day. Then we also sometimes have other areas that we're responsible for. I have to check our internet cafe, ensure the guests aren't having any challenges connecting to their people back home. And then we have an arcade that we're responsible for as well. That's revenue coming into the company and we need to make sure those machines are working, that the guests are happy and they're having a good time. So now I'm in the guest services back office. I have a lot of emails to follow up on, following up with our guests, making sure I'm calling them, seeing if they're okay, if their challenges have been resolved writing reviews for my crew members, and just making sure I'm communicating with other departments. And then of course, I'm a leader. We have to make sure we're checking in on my team, having one-on-one -on -one in those meetings to make sure we're sharing all the information that we need to do our job, and that we're enjoying our job. Being a guest service manager on board is a lot of hard work, and every crew member works seven days a week. But one of the perks of working for Disney Cruise Line is that every day we're in a different port and we get to travel all around the world. I just enjoyed some really good pizza with some good friends in Skagway, Alaska, and now we're going to go wander around and see what else we can see. So after a nice break in port, it's time to head back towards the ship and lead a team meeting with all my crew members. So now I'm back on board after some fun in port, and I'm about to lead a team meeting with my crew members. It's a great opportunity for us to download any important information that they need for the week, go over any challenges they have or personal situations that we can try to assist with as leaders, and then talk to them and motivate them to get them to create that magic they do on a daily basis. It's a lot of fun for all of us. So now I'm in the officer mess. It's really a great place to end the day. It's a quiet place to have a meal. They have a great staff that takes good care of us. They serve high quality foods, some healthier options for those who choose to eat that way. And it's free, you really can't beat that. So it's really just a great place to have a good meal with good friends.
So we're back in the lobby atrium. It's a little bit different than what we had before. It's much quieter. It's the end of the day now, and our guests are all about relaxing and trying to get to sleep, and the crew is all about relaxing and trying to have some fun. We're actually about to have a crew recognition event put on our, by our crew activities manager. It's their job on board to make sure that we're having fun functions, um, recognition events, and coordinate the port of interest for the crew. They work really hard and they deserve some downtime as well. So let's go on in and have a good time. So it's been a really great day. Guest services managers typically work about 10 hours a day, starting as early as 6 sometimes, depending on the port we're in, and working as late as the closing line till midnight. It's really rewarding though, and we really gotta love what you do. So I really appreciate you following me around for a day in the life of a guest services manager. In this slide, some indicative cruise tourism professions are presented along with the respective salaries. The professions required on a cruise ship can be divided into two to three categories. The ones regarding the deck department, the engine department, and the ones concerning the hotel slash purser's department. In the deck and engine departments, the salaries of the staff employed range from 1000 to 7000 with the best well-paid professions being the ones of the captain slash master and chief engineer, ranging from around 4500 to 7000 euros per month. These highly remunerated professions require long experience at sea along with academic qualifications, degrees, and a set of certain skills and competencies such as planning and organizing, problem solving, leading, deciding and teamwork. The hotel department of a cruise ship is composed of various smaller departments such as the administration, the galley, the sanitation department, the dining room, the bars, the housekeeping department, the provision department and the entertainment department. The salaries in this department range from 1,000 to 5,400 euros per month. The hotel manager who is responsible for the entire hotel department is the highest in the hierarchy in this department and receives the highest salary which usually ranges between 3,800 to 5,400 euros per month. This profession requires academic qualifications such as degree in tourism management and long professional experience on board as well as certain skills and competences such as customer orientation, planning and organizing, problem solving, leading, deciding and teamwork. Other high salaries in the hotel department are the ones of the food and beverage manager between 2,800 and 3,600 euros, the chief purser between 2,600 and 3,600 euros, and the executive chef between 3,300 and 4,500 euros. The ultimate objective of the Mentor Project is to develop a framework to provide career guidance and orientation not only to students but also to existing graduates and professionals. In this a learning course, the presented mentoring framework targets the students. In particular, this framework aims at presenting to the students the opportunities and the required technical skills and behavioral competencies for future employment in the cruise tourism industry, and to provide them viable educational options slash paths. There are students who are either confused or uncertain about their employment preferences. Moreover, there are students who despite having a clear idea of what they want to achieve in life, do not know the path they need to follow or the required academic qualification. In addition, some students might also have certain convictions and views about certain professional fields. Hence, career mentoring will help students overcome these by assisting in discovering their potential and aptitude and suggest accordingly the right career path. The starting point of the career path reflects the current status of the student who seeks a future employment in the cruise tourism industry. The end point of the career path is the admission of the student to a vocational or academic institution related to an initially selected blue profession of the cruise tourism industry. The final selection of the path is based on the financial resources and monetary values that the family of a student is willing to invest in his or her educational improvement. Let's see an indicative implementation of the mentoring framework. All available blue sectors maritime transport, cruise tourism. Marine aquaculture and offshore oil and gas are presented to a Cypriot student and after discussion with the mentor, the student decides to follow a career path in the cruise tourism industry since this sector is more appealing to him slash her. Afterwards, the blue professions that are currently in greater demand and the ones that will be in high demand in the next 10 years are presented to him slash her, so that the student identifies the most suitable one based on his or her interests. In this case scenario, the student expresses his interest in the blue profession of the marine engineer. Initially, 
The mentor should increase the awareness of the student regarding this profession and a combination of speeches and real-world success stories are organized by the Cypriot representative of the Blue Career Center and presented to the student in order to enhance his familiarization with the requirements of this profession. In case a student is no longer intrigued by this career path after these presentations, then he can revise his initial selection and choose another blue profession. In our example, in order to hold the position of marine engineer, someone should have a bachelor degree either from a technical university of marine engineering or from a maritime academy. Studies in the university are four to five years and then one additional year will be spent aboard as apprentice engineer. In the maritime academies the studies range between three and four years. And at the same time with their studies students work for one year on board a ship as apprentice engineers, and graduate as third engineers. Gaining experience on a ship is essential in both cases. Moreover, graduates of these universities and academies can climb their way up to second engineers and then to chief engineers. It takes one to three years working on a ship to become a second engineer and another two to three years to become chief engineer. The next step of the mentoring process refers to the identification of the necessary technical skills of the student. The student should have a good knowledge of math and physics during high school. This knowledge is a prerequisite for his admission in the academic institution for obtaining the degree of the marine engineer. As far as the required behavior competencies are concerned, the student should develop teamwork, planning and organizing, and problem solving through the assignment of group projects in high school. The next step includes the mapping of the available educational institutions for this profession. Let's take four examples. In the first example, the mentor has expressed his or her desire to study in his country, Cyprus and not abroad. This initial constraint leads to two available maritime academies in Cyprus for the profession of the marine engineer, the Cyprus Maritime Academy, in Nicosia, and the Mediterranean Maritime Academy, in Lamazal. Only one academy is located near the residential area of the student, Nicosia, whereas the other one is in different town, Lamazal. The time duration for obtaining the degree of marine engineer is four years in the Cyprus Maritime Academy and three years in the Mediterranean Maritime Academy. The final selection of the career path depends on the cost constraint which may include study fees, house rent, transport cost. Depending on his or her financial status and the time he she is willing to dedicate to his studies, the student has these two options. In the second example, the mentor has expressed his or her desire to study abroad in Greece. As a result, he can study either in the National Technical University of Athens or in Merchant Marine and Maritime Academies which amount to 12 in this example. In the first case, studies are for four years and one additional year will have to be spent on board while in the second case, three years and one year on board a ship. Depending on the financial status of the student and the time he she is willing to dedicate to his studies, he she has these indicative 13 options. In the third example, the mentor has expressed his desire to study abroad in Bulgaria. As a result, he can study either in the Nikola Vapsarov Naval Academy in Varna or in the Technical University of Varna. Both organizations provide courses in English. In both institutions, the study's duration for obtaining a bachelor degree is four years. In the fourth example, the mentor wishes to study in Romania. Consequently, he she can study either in the Constanta Maritime University or in the Ovidius University of Constanta, or in the Academia Navala Mircea Salbatron in Constanta. All these institutions deliver relevant courses in English and the duration of the bachelor studies is four years. It is worth noting that in all the examples provided, the list of the educational institutions provided, is non-exhaustive. In this slide some additional tips and information are provided to you in case you wish to work in the cruise tourism industry. First of all, you will have to be 21 years of age or older. You'll also need a valid passport, clean criminal record and English language proficiency. All candidates must also pass medical exams and have the correct visas for the many ports around the world. Most applications are made with a CV and cover letter, or by completing an application form. Just like for any job, you'll need to tailor your application to the specific job role, highlighting your qualifications, skills and competences. Cruise ship jobs are incredibly competitive so additional relevant degrees qualifications or experience that feature in your CV are highly valued by employers and will help you stand out.
It is possible to get a job on a cruise ship with no qualifications or experience, but you'll need to be prepared to start at the bottom and work your way up. Entry requirements will vary between cruise operators, so make sure you do your research before applying. Most large cruise companies recruit via recruitment agencies so make sure that you also read and understand the agency's application procedures. There will likely be several application stages and these may include a video or telephone interview before you receive an invitation to be interviewed face at office. Your personality is a key indicator of your suitability. Applicants must have a positive, cando attitude, enthusiasm and energy. Employers desire confident and outgoing members of staff who are passionate about providing excellent customer service. A willingness to commit to long contracts is also important. The candidates will possibly be asked to undergo training such as the standards of training, certification and which kipping known as SDCW and first aid. André Gide, a French author and winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1947 said, Man cannot discover new oceans unless he has the courage to lose sight of the shore. Dare to become explorers and you will discover amazing places and people, you will get to know many different cultures and expand your horizons by working on a cruise ship. It is generally a transformative and rewarding experience. Come on board.